First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 7. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 7. Central Realty, Jill speaking. How can I help you? Yes, hello Jill. I've got a problem, a complaint I wish to register. Who should I speak to? You'll want to speak to Tracy, the residential manager. Just a moment and I'll put you through. Thanks. Hello, this is Tracy. I understand your rent is going to be increased. Yes, this is why I'm calling. I was told that my rent would not be increased for the length of my six-month contract, which I signed only four months ago. What's going on? Is my landlord allowed to do this? I see. Yes. Okay. That seems strange. Look, can I take down some of your particulars and I'll register a formal complaint to the landlord on your behalf? Yes, sure. That'd be good. Firstly, name and address contact details. Yes, Jane McSweeney. That's M-C-S-W-E-E-N-Y. 3 Mauger Street. That's M-A-U-G-H-E-R Street. Windery, 3355. And the phone there? Yes, you can contact me on 334756, extension 3176. I generally arrive home by 6 o'clock in the evening, so you can call me around that time, but not after 9. Oh, sorry, 8.30, because that's the time I leave for work. Okay, so I should note down that the problem is that your landlord wants to raise your rent. And when did you first move in? Yes, well, the contract began on August 1st, and... Oh, hang on. Sorry, that's the ending date. We actually moved in on February the 1st. Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 8 to 10. Okay. Good. Now, if need be, you will have to send a letter to the Rental Tenancy Board. But as I said, first let us approach your landlord on your behalf and see if we can work out the problem before it gets to that situation. I'd be very surprised if you have to send a letter. 95% of these kinds of problems get solved early on. Okay. Now, if you have any problems you need to discuss, feel free to come in and talk with the general manager. In the meantime, if you would just wait until we receive an answer from your landlord, we'll be able to then plan our next step. Is there anything else I could be doing? Well, you could write a letter to the RTB listing all the events as they happened from your point of view. But as I say, hold on to it. Don't send it unless we have to. Well, that's about it for now. Thanks for your call. I'm sure we can sort this out. Thanks very much for your help. I hope we can sort it out too. Bye for now. Yes, bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. Two. You are going to hear a talk given by an international student. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16.
Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. As an international student coming from Sierra Leone, it gives me great honor to give these opening remarks and welcome you all to Ashisi University, where excellence is the code. I believe I speak on behalf of my fellow colleagues when I say we feel that we are the most fortunate and privileged university students in Ghana. You may ask, what is the basis of such a conclusion? And I will simply say to you, in which other tertiary institution in Ghana do you find the same level of IT infrastructure and facilities available to students? Where also do you find such a low ratio of students to lecturers and computers? In which other educational institution do you find 55% of students on some sort of financial aid who in addition enjoy services and benefits such as job placement after graduation, on-campus employment that pays above the minimum wage, a supply of textbooks, and access to online databases. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no other institution of higher education in Ghana today that matches the learning environment and the quality of instruction at Ashisi. I could continue listing reasons why we students feel this way, but I only have five minutes for this speech. Believe me, I could go on for hours. At Ashisi, everyone is considered a leader and is treated special. Ashisi equips us with the necessary determination, strength, and belief in ourselves to be able to achieve our goals. We are being taught to think outside the box and to question and challenge our assumptions about the world we live in. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the benefits of a liberal arts education, which seeks to broaden our intellectual capacity. Now look at questions 17 to 20. As the talk continues, answer questions 17 to 20. At Ashisi, we are also exposed to real-life situations and learn how to deal with them through a practical and vigorous academic program, as well as various seminars in which prominent leaders in their professions are invited as guests to interact and share their knowledge and experiences. Some people, even some of you in this audience, may believe that tuition at Ashisi is too high. But I say to you that the students here are unanimous in saying it is worth it. Not because we all come from well-to-do families, but because when it comes to one's education, you need to aim at getting the best from the right place. One's education defines who you are and what your perception of life and society will become. Ashisi offers us a top-quality education which meets high international standards. This is due to the strong linkages the school has established with three of the very best schools in the United States, namely Swarthmore College, which is ranked as the best liberal arts school in the U.S., UC Berkeley, and the University of Washington. In addition, Ashisi has recruited an excellent faculty consisting of lecturers from various countries, including Ghana, the U.K., and the United States. These lecturers are among the best in their respective academic fields. I believe this is the school's greatest asset, a strong and knowledgeable team dedicated to achieving successful results from their students and who also love their job. I would like to end with a personal message. My fellow students, because we are among the most privileged in our society, we should take responsibility for our own destinies, make our parents proud, and create a legacy for those that follow us and Africa as a whole. We must give back to our society after completing school and achieving our goals in life, which I believe we all can if we properly utilize our time and take advantage of all that is offered here at Ashisi. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between a university student and a librarian about using the city archives. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. As you listen to the first part of the conversation, answer questions 21 to 24. Hello. I was wondering if you could give me some information about using the archives? I'd be happy to. Are you a resident of the city? Actually, I live just outside the city, but I study at the university downtown. That's fine. All you need to do is show your university identification card and you can use the archives at no charge, as long as your ID card is current, of course. Yes, it's valid. So I don't have to pay anything? No, city residents pay an annual fee, but students can use the archives for free. Everyone else needs to get special permission from the director, but that doesn't apply to you, of course. Oh, good. I was also wondering about the schedule. I have classes every day, Monday through Friday, and I also have a part-time job. So I could really only use the archives on weekends. That's not a problem at all. We're open all weekend. Actually, the only day we're closed is Monday. So you can come any day, Tuesday through Sunday. Are you open in the evenings? Yes, we're open from 9.30 in the morning until 8.30 in the evening. That will fit my schedule well. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Is there something else I can help you with? Yes. One thing I'll be needing to see for one of my class projects is old photographs. Do you have photographs of the city in the 19th century that I could look at? Yes, we store all the photographs in the basement. Those stairs over there will take you down to the photography collection. Just tell the librarian there what you're interested in and he'll help you. Those would be 19th century photographs? Yes, the entire collection is there. Now, if you're interested in seeing documents from the 19th century, those are right here on the ground floor. I would like to see some of those documents. Does that collection include newspapers too? No, all the newspapers from the earliest ones in the 18th century up to the current time are on the second floor. Here, let me just give you this map of the archives and you'll be able to find whatever it is you need. Thank you. Oh, I see you have a whole room devoted to maps. Yes, on the third floor. That's great, because one thing I need to do is look at how the city has developed over time. I'm sure you'll find a lot of helpful information there. Of course, some of the maps are several centuries old so generally visitors are only allowed to see photographic reproductions of them. That shouldn't be a problem. What's this on the fourth floor, Ogden's Woolen Mill? As I'm sure you know, Ogden's Woolen Mill was the major entity responsible for the growth of this city in the 19th century. The Ogdeneers gave money for the archives to devote an entire floor to information about the history of the mill. Will I be able to find information about the Ogden family there? Photographs, personal papers, things like that? Probably the family photographs are stored downstairs in the photography collection. The personal papers would be on the fifth floor, where we keep all the personal papers of famous residents of our city. 
Thank you so much for your help. I'll be able to do a lot of my research here. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a lecturer giving a talk on a type of fundraising for business called crowdfunding. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning everyone. Today we're continuing our look at funding opportunities for small startup businesses. The emergence of social media has given companies the ability to connect with fans and potential customers directly. On the back of the growth in social media, a model of raising finance has emerged known as crowdfunding. This revolutionary way of raising finance began with micro-lending in the 90s. More recently, an equity-based model has emerged that allows people to invest directly in a new company. We're going to examine this in more detail later, but let's turn first to a third model, which I'll term a fan-based model. With this model of crowdfunding, Individuals are encouraged to give an amount of money to support the launch of a project or initiative without the promise of any financial return. Instead, there's a reward for donating. This contrasts with the micro-lending model, which would require a return on investment, and the equity-based scheme, which may offer shares. Crowdfunding portals or websites allow the business concerned to present the initiative along with the financial target required. There's a fixed time limit for fundraising, and if the target amount is reached, all donations are paid to the company or individual. Whether it's an author planning to write a new book, an independent film company looking to make a new film, or a technology company with an idea for an app, the person or company needing funding would turn to its fan base for support. This is managed through one of the many crowdfunding online portals that have emerged. Of course, a fan or supporter of a particular initiative is likely to give money anyway. But donation-based crowdfunding will often make donating even more attractive by offering a rewards-based incentive scheme. Let's take a film company, for example, that needs funding for a new film. For a small, set donation, the donor might be offered a free ticket to the premiere or a DVD of the film. A larger set donation might be rewarded by the chance to attend a launch event when the film goes live. Those people who make bigger donations could even be offered the chance to meet the cast of the film, whilst the highest level donation could see the person's name mentioned in the film credits. For companies that already have a significant fan base, Crowdfunding offers a fantastic opportunity to raise money quickly from a large number of people, each of whom donates just a small amount of money. Compare this to the time and effort that would be needed to sell your idea to investors or your bank manager, particularly in an age when raising finance can be difficult. The company may also have links with partner companies 
or organizations that run fundraising events. In this case, you can significantly increase participation by working with these organizations to promote your crowdfunding project. Another significant advantage is that you can reach out to your fan base for feedback on the project while it's being developed, thus making the final product more appealing. Crowdfunding enables you to raise awareness of the product at an early stage, thus increasing the potential for sales. With so many people behind you, it can also act as a great incentive to get the best possible product out on time and on budget. However, there are disadvantages to bear in mind. The model can be described as all or nothing. If you don't reach the monetary target required in the agreed time, all promises of donations are cancelled and no money is paid, leaving you back at square one. Should this happen, or still worse, you receive the funding but are unable to come up with the product, not only will your fans end up disappointed, but the portal will record the fact that you failed to reach your target or that the initiative failed. Fulfilling all the pledges that you've made to people can also be very time-consuming. For example, remembering to send out copies of books or free cinema tickets can sometimes be forgotten in the excitement and frenzy of launching your product. People sometimes forget to factor in the cost of rewards when calculating profit margins. But these can be significant. And finally, if you have a small fan base, for example, you're a new company or have a small social media footprint, raising awareness of your initiative will be challenging. These drawbacks aside, donation-based crowdfunding is a wonderful opportunity for individuals or small startups to raise funds for that exciting new project whilst reaching out and connecting to the people who are most likely to support and promote your work for you. That is the end of part 4.